What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Poco A5 and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X-Storm. I know it's been a long time that I haven't made a video on this and I have been receiving consistent updates of this ROM left and right almost every day I was actually using older belts I kept updating to the latest belt and it worked perfectly fine if you don't know how to flash this ROM on your Poco A5 the latest guide will be present in the description do not worry and make sure you use the tutorial bar recovery that is linked in the video description to actually flash this ROM and as usual it is based on the Hyper-OS firmware and all if you are not familiar with those you can check out the flashing guide again even though here it shows it's 19th July 2024 build, if I go into this Evolution Access Search Forge link, as you can see, this is the 23rd July 2024 build that I have downloaded. It's this one. I have actually updated it to the latest build and I have been using it for like almost more than 48 hours now and my overall experience with this particular ROM has been awesome. Here in the Android version section, it should look familiar to you if you have used Evolution X in the past, has the Evolution X logo up top and the Android version is of course Android 14 and we have the Evolution X version as 9.2. This is the latest one as of right now and we have the security patch latest of July 5th, 2024 here and we also have the stock kernel as the 5.10 GKI kernel and the build maintainer is of course Juhu up. So huge thanks to the developer of this ROM and we have the build date 23rd July 2024 here if you're noticing I'm on the latest build so basically normal stuff and here in the system updates you can check for updates and in case you want to see the change log properly here you will get all the listed change logs for this particular ROM but overall one of the best features that is present right here that has been fixed I would say in my opinion is circle to search and here let me actually give you a demo of that and here if I just tap and hold on the pill bar I will get the circle to search kind of feature and I can make a circle just like this and I can search for it. It doesn't force close or anything. Earlier it was not working but in these particular builds from like last two to three builds it has been working really well as you can see the circle to search and selecting stuff all those things are working great. Also one of my favorite features about this circle to search is that if you just tap and hold on the pill bar you will also get this translate kind of feature and that will translate any kind of text as you can see. So yeah, this is a very unique feature in my opinion and I use it on a daily basis. So this is a really handy feature for me and it has been fixed so I'm really happy about it. So circle to search has been completely fixed and that's just awesome to see here. And if you're wondering about the little customizations here in the system, we also have the button customization like we have the edge long swipe actions. You can customize that long press power button toggle torch and all the control stuff and we have the show volume panel on the left side and stuff like that. We have the click to take partial screenshot. Then we also have the system profiles, you can disable it if you want to. We also have the gestures here, we have the quick tap or the back tap kind of gestures. And if I do back tap, as you can see, it says quick tap rejected. All these functionalities are working great. We have the quickly open camera. Navigation mode is there in the settings of it. We have the navigation hint, back gesture animation, back gesture haptic. Also the IME space, you can actually change. Pill length and radius, you can control. I have with the maximum. This is how it should look like with the maximum settings. And we have the back gesture height. So I have to invoke assistant is also working fine from the corners. As you can see, this is Gemini, of course. It works great. And we have this hold handle to search kind of, you can disable it, I guess. And we have the two button and three button navigation as well. One hand mode is also working perfectly fine as you can see. We have the lift to check phone as well and there is the show ambient option and it is actually working fine. Let me show you here. I just lock the device and if I just pick it up as you can see ambient display is working fine. If I just double tap to wake as you can see this is how beautiful it looks in the lock screen. Let me show you some more things like the swipe break screenshot and stuff. All those things are working great. Share, edit, delete and the Google Lens, even the capture mode feature will appear when it's needed. We have the double tap to check phone and the prevent ringing kind of thing. Let's talk about the home screen and this is how it looks like. I have been using a AI wallpaper app for this particular wallpaper. To the left of the home screen, we have the Google's Discover page working perfectly fine. Swiping up will get you to the app drawer and this is how it looks like. And swiping down will get you to the quick selling panel which looks like this. And talking about basic stuff, yes, the widgets and stuff, everything is working fine. You can see the Bluetooth battery and even the phone's battery from right here very smoothly and all the widget animation and all everything is working great and if you go into the play store settings you will get the device is certified so that's nice and in case you are wondering about the banking apps if they are working or not yes they are working flawlessly i haven't had any problems as the device meets basic integrity and device integrity both by default and the DRM actually shows as L1 so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos, Internet DP. Also the IR Blaster present on the device is working great, no problems with it. And inside Google Photos it actually shows this pixel can back up unlimited photos and videos so that's nice to see. And here stock camera icon actually looks a little bit different if you're noticing a plus. 
yes it does look a little bit different but yeah this is how it looks like and if i open it of course this is the poco camera and yeah it works fine you should not worry about the stock camera over here all the lenses like the 0.66 ultra wide angle lens and the 2x 1x options are working great and in the video settings there is up to 4k and 30 fps option you cannot switch 4k 60 over here but yes 1080p 60 is possible as you can see so yeah and for the front camera as well you can switch to 1080p 60 fps option if you need that so yeah all those things are present and even the portrait mode and stuff everything is working great with the front and the rear camera so selfies and all with portrait mode will be working perfectly fine there is also the pro mode you can take pro mode videos as well up to 4k and 30 fps again there is the documents mode and all all those things are working great and if you just swipe up there is the panorama vlog short film and the slow motion all those things so yes with the stock camera i have no complaints the shutter speed it's really great no issues whatsoever as you can see and I can take multiple different photos really quickly. No issues whatsoever that I have faced here. Also, if you need a G cam, I'll list a video in the description so that you can try this particular G cam. It has multiple different profiles and all. You can take iPhone like photos and stuff like that. So yeah, you can definitely use this G cam if you want to. Now the stock dialer here is of course the Google dialer. It has the call recording option and stuff. And for the call recording, there is this play audio tone instead of disclaimer, you can turn it on so that it doesn't announce that and it has the automatic call recording for unknown numbers and all. In terms of the quick setting panel toggles, I have plethora of toggles as you can see I have added and you can edit and add multiple different toggles as well from right here if you need those like the FPS info and stuff right now is there you can add them and there are more options as you can see from here. Let me just turn on the FPS info and if I just turn it on as you can see I can notice the FPS info right here on the corner of the screen. So yes, it's really nice to see the FPS info back. So if you're a gamer, it will be helpful, I guess. And for the screen recording and all, we have this entire screen and the single app kind of option if you need those. Even the quality you can change and there is the audio recording for device and microphone audio at the same time. And we have the HEVC recording and stuff. All these features are still present. Now let me just move on to the settings panel. This is how it looks like. Now let's talk about the battery quickly. And we have the charging control right here. We have the battery information so that you can get to see the charging cycle count. And the battery temperature we have the thermal profiles right here so you can set per apps thermal profile to benchmark or something like performance mode over here also we have the browser camera dialer gaming streaming all these kind of modes we have the battery diagnostic stuff now let me talk about the battery life that i have tested with the aku battery app and as usual i have been getting really good battery life in my opinion these are all estimated numbers but just look at it i am getting about eight hours plus of screen on time that's just really great and the screen of here shows as 49 or 50 hours standby time you can say and we have the combined use of 12 hours 28 minutes here it shows but i use the device heavily so maybe that's why it's showing lower in the health section for me the battery health here shows as 88 percent this is the original battery i'm still using it's almost more than a year i guess so yeah it has been holding up really well no issues that i have faced and in terms of the fast charging here are the fast charging numbers that i got in this particular rom and it, while charging or while even fast charging, the phone does not get heated up at all. I didn't notice any kind of overheating while using the device while charging or something. That overall optimization of this ROM, it's really good. In terms of security, of course, in the settings of it, we have the more settings. And in here, you can see a lot of things are there. There is the high developer status right here. Also, we have these captured screen status and stuff. And there is the app lock as well. I have locked particular apps. So app locking is working great. I'll show you that. But here in the device unlock, let me show you the settings. These are the settings that you get. You get the fingerprint and face unlock both. Now I'm just going to show you the fingerprint scanner speed. And I have the always on display off. And if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it unlocks perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. Very fast. And here, let me just show you again. Also, the pickup gesture I have already showed you, it's working great, but even with the always on display, as you can see, looks great, works great, no problems whatsoever that you will face. And even the app lock here, as you can see, this app is locked. And if I just tap the film scanner, as you can see, the app properly unlocks. So yes, app lock here is working great again. There is watch unlock as well, if you have a Wear OS kind of watch, I guess. Let me show you the face unlock. Just completed the setup of face unlock. And here, we don't have that swipe up kind of thing from the always on display if i just double tap to wake yes it starts to use the face unlock already let me show you one more time as you can see the icon looks like this and it unlocks face unlock is really fast no problems but i wish there was the swipe up kind of thing but yeah that's how it is it's not there let me show you the test to website and in here with the test to website it shows about 100 plus fps as you can see in terms of overall performance it's good sometimes it drops to 90 hertz i don't know why but yeah that's how it is and here let me just open a couple of apps Yes, I had them open, but yeah, 
I'm gonna just show you with memory opening and if I even if I close that and right now if I open it as you can see it opens really fast no problems and even while scrolling YouTube and stuff it's really smooth experience no lags or shutters or anything and it's a really good experience overall in my opinion so this particular ROM is definitely one of my favorites because of the smoothness because of the overall stability and the amount of consistent update it gets like even if there is a bug I know that within like one or two days it will be fixed with a newer update and that is why I love this particular Evolution X ROM for the Poco A5 and here are the benchmarks of this particular build in case you want to get an idea of the performance of this ROM in detail and inside notifications of course we still have these flash notification kind of things and in the app settings we also have the cloned apps so you can add two accounts of whatsapp or facebook or whichever you need in the sound settings this is how it looks like we have the volume steps as well in case you need that then we have the live caption the spatial audio stuff and if you scroll down more we have the vibration and haptics you can control the whole ui haptic just notice how many options are there for turning on or turning off vibrations and we have the alarm sound notification sound it's a changing option in the part app volume control dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound then the dolby atmos is also there i have been using it with the dynamic profile we also have the equalizer preset there is the speaker virtualization and even for headphones there is virtualization we have the studio widening option then we have the dialogue enhancer and all we have the bass enhancer volume leveler all these things and we also have the clear speaker option as well in here and the volume panel looks like this you can expand the volume panel just like this let me show you in the home screen yes you can change the output device from right here or you can increase or decrease the volume from right here you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here so yes all these things are still working in the display settings we have the brightness level adaptive or auto brightness yes auto brightness is working fine no need to worry screen timeout is there up to 30 minutes there is also screen attention we have the dark theme and there is the pure black option i have been using it with that works great we have the nightlight option as well you can customize that live display is there and we have the color calibration kind of options then we also have the normal color changing option i have been using it with a saturated option and we have the peak refresh rate up to 120 hertz you can also choose it to be 90 hertz as well that's really nice even the minimum refresh rate you can change it to 90 or whichever you like and the low power refresh rate also you can change we have the screen saver double tap to wake and sleep we have the wake up on plug and even the per app refresh rate is there, it, you can actually set it to 60 or 120 Hz. Also in the wallpaper and styles, of course, we have the Android 14 kind of clocks and these are the clocks which are present. You can use any of the clock that you would like. So yes, all these Android 14 kind of clocks are there, no need to worry. As you can see, these look really, really nice. So yes, you can use any clock that you would like. We have the wallpaper changing option right here and lock screen shortcuts you can change. We have the home screen settings right here. Of course, there is streamed icons and we also have the grid option up to 5x5. Five five. Now it's time that I will show you the customizations of this ROM. Before that let me actually show you the power menu looks like this. I also have the advanced reboot enabled and I can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. So this is really nice. Let me just show you in the evolver settings. In the themes we have the monet settings and we have huge huge amount of customization. You will definitely get tired by watching this. Let me show you still. We have the color source, luminance etc changing option. The system fonts are still there. Just notice the amount of fonts which are present. We have the lock screen clock styles. These are the old Android 13 kind of clock styles. You can use that too if you want. So yes, I'm not going to show you even to the bottom. We have the system icons. These are the options. Icon shapes here are the options. Signal icon styles are also there and just notice the amount of options. Even the Wi-Fi icon styles and huge, huge amount of options are there right now. Even the navigation bar style if you're using three button options. And we have the brightness slider style as well. And just notice even the brightness slider style options are present whichever brightness slider that you would want to use. You can definitely use those. We have the screen of animation as well, CRD scale, etc. Inside lock screen, we have the charging stats, the pulse, ripple effect animation, authentication success, pocket detection. And inside status bar, we have the brightness control, quick pull down, status bar, tuner is also there. You can have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons. Then we have the battery style right now. And there is the icon portrait and stuff. And there is the next to the icon option. Yes, the battery styles has been removed, like the iOS 16 kind of styles and stuff. They were there, but they were causing some issues. That's why that they've actually removed it. He actually mentioned it in the change log i guess so yes that's how it is i'm fine with it as long as the rom is stable enough and we have the clock position and stuff all these things you can customize the whole status bar clock and you can even add a background chip just like this from here and we have the 4g icon style wi-fi standards bluetooth battery stats 
the logo and we have the notification count and just notice the amount of option including with the battery bar and all then we have the quick setting customization quick setting style you can actually change from here quick setting panel style also you can change then just notice the amount of option even the brightness rider position you can actually change it to bottom so that you get to see the brightness rider even on the non-expanded quick setting panel we have the data usage floating clear all button then we have the hide on secure lock screen secure the quick setting tile require unlock option so this is really secure let me actually show you even from the lock screen i cannot really get access to the power menu as you can see i have the power menu disabled from the lock screen even the like, quick setting panel will not appear even if i bring the quick setting panel it's just dark you cannot really do anything so yes, this is a really good privacy kind of feature i feel like even if your device gets stolen thief cannot actually power off the device even if he holds the power button for a long time the device will actually restart and everything will stay on as it is so yeah that's how it is and that is why i love these kind of privacy features inside notifications we have the heads up customization the edge lighting then the alert while displays on option and inside power menu we have the show on lock screen you can disable that and that is what i was talking about while i was talking about privacy for the lock screen and the power menu actions options are there and you can bring multiple things like the home control and stuff in the power menu itself if you need that then we have the buttons and these are the options like the layout invert layout all these things are there then we have the miscellaneous settings right here we have the component spoofing and just notice the amount of spoofing we have the play integrity spoof then the integrity values you can change as well i guess then the pixel props storage encryption google photos unlimited storage is there and you can turn it on from right here we have the higher piece in games and the snapchat spoof option we have the ignore wallpaper dimming and we have the unlimited screen record allow application downgrade and we have the ignore windows secure flags so that is all the customizations which are present in this ROM. This is still my favorite ROM and let me know in the comments what you guys think about the latest Evolution X ROM. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share it with your friends. If they actually want to experience a custom ROM on the Poco A5 and how is the experience if they want to know, definitely share this video out with your friends. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD Index signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.